Yeah, I don't need a partner. I need Sam. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down plot points that iCarly left unresolved when Paramount Plus apparently said, Puck it, this doesn't need closure. By the way, hashtag spoilers. Mom? Number 10. Where's Carly's father? Throughout the original series, Colonel Stephen Shea is constantly mentioned, but he doesn't make an appearance until the finale. You guys, it's my dad! <laughs> that is clear. Yeah, now. <laughs> Unable to stay long, the colonel offers to take Carly with him to Italy, which she accepts. In the revival, Carly talks about reconnecting with her father and their time overseas. What does your dad do? Well, he's in the Air Force, but was somehow on a submarine? This led us to wonder if Carly's father might be given a more active role, but once again, he's designated to being an off-screen presence. Although his name comes up here and there, we're not given much insight into his military career or if he's getting closer to retirement. If Carly and Freddie ended up postponing their nuptials, we'd like to think that he would have taken a leave to walk his daughter down the aisle. Figure you want to say some goodbyes before we go? Number 9. Do things work out with Pearl and Troy? Pearl becomes Freddie's girlfriend in the second season, but it's clear that they're not compatible. The relationship inevitably crumbles as Carly and Freddie come to terms with their feelings for each other. Don't feel too bad for Pearl, however. She sporadically dumps Freddie for Troy, whom Carly was ironically dating in an effort to get over Freddie. Pearl's gonna eat tonight. While this was a satisfying enough exit, it would have been interesting to see what became of this relationship, and if Pearl ever came to truly reconcile with Creddy. You're right. <laughs> I'm never going to know you as well as Carly does. Because you and Carly are clearly in love with each other. Had there been a fourth season, iCarly also could have elaborated on the dynamic between Carly's manager Paul and Millicent's mother Gwen. While the attraction wasn't mutual, maybe Gwen would have warmed up to Paul over time. We'll never know. I just needed a minute to myself. A little. I'll go with you. Number 8. Whatever happened to Tebow? Tebow started as a minor character in the first series, appearing at the Groovy Smoothie where he attempted to make food on a stick, the next trendy menu item. Scared to take a walk on the pickle side of town? <laughs> he eventually took on a larger role, even going to live with the Benson family for a period. The revival reveals that the Groovy Smoothie went out of business due to a rat infestation. The location is converted into Shea What, which becomes the new hangout spot for our characters. The coins will be hidden in plain sight at Shea What forever. Yet there's no mention of what happened to Tebow after his previous place of business closed. While not an official iCarly crew member, you'd think the revival would have at least mentioned Tebow. More info is given on what became of Sako, who we still haven't seen. My buddy Sako opened an arcade and it closed a week later because he realized he hates loud noises and children. Number 7. What's next for Harper and Tinsley? Introduced in the revival, Harper Betancourt fills the best friend role becoming Carly's roommate and partner in crime. In the third season, Harper enters a serious relationship with the wealthy Tinsley, an old frenemy turned lover. Did you only hire me because you wanted to kiss me this whole time? I can't believe it took you this long to figure it out. The relationship isn't without its hiccups, but by the finale, the two have solidified their commitment to one another. We promise to be brutally honest and we girls don't lie. Except about actually liking Negronis. Nobody wants that herbal essence ass drink. All signs indicated that Tinsley was not only going to be a mainstay of Harper's life, but the show as well. We would have liked to have seen the relationship mature, especially with Tinsley's bottomless bank account opening the door to plenty of new story ideas. Oh well, maybe these two could get a spin-off with Tinsley showing Harper how the 1% live. Never ring a bell in my face again. Don't test a hoe. No we. Number 6. Did Marissa and Lubert make it to the altar? Obnoxious former doorman Lubert and Mrs. Benson might be this franchise's most bizarre couple, which is saying a lot. Lubert, my big slime, my slime ball. After briefly dating on the original show, the two rekindled their disturbing romance in the revival. Permission to kiss the witness. Permission, freaking granted. <laughs> Season 3 kicks off with the couple getting engaged, building to their wedding in the finale. With the big day not coming together as they envisioned, Marissa and Lubert ditch their wedding guests, deciding to elope. I got a text from Marissa. They ran off to Vegas for the high noon elopement of their dreams. The wedding is off. Presumably their Vegas wedding goes off without a hitch. Or would that be with a hitch? In any case, we never see them tie the knot. Assuming they did, 
Who would have moved in with who? How would Freddie adjust to having a stepfather? Most importantly, could Mrs. B ever love Lubert more than Freddie? My mom getting engaged to the adult man I bullied as a child. Number five, Gibby who? Gibby Gibson is another character whose prominence grew throughout the first series. My mom thinks I'm awesome. Unlike Tebow though, Gibby was upgraded to a series regular by the fourth season. While still often treated as a third wheel, Gibby became an important part of the iCarly crew. One more for the road? Gibby! This made his absence from the revival all the more curious. The gang doesn't even talk about his whereabouts. We actually see more of his little brother Guppy, who returns to testify against Carly in an episode. Hi, Guppy! Happy birthday! Even then, Guppy doesn't delve into what Gibby's been up to, although the others appear to miss him. We can only assume that Gibby fell into a time vortex and wound up in the 80s with the Goldbergs. Now we'll never get that crossover. This isn't my first rodeo. Number four. So Spencer's a dad now? Spencer is sometimes mistaken for Carly's dad, but he's really her older brother. Anyway, would you let me borrow your video camera? I would. Awesome. Though I can't. Why not? <laughs> I made it into a squirrel. Turns out that Spencer does have some dad energy in him, which he unleashed at a cryobank. These are my spoppers and spopettes. See, I've been donating my seed. Sorry, my sperm. <laughs> Apologies, my DNA. I'll accept. Gross. In one of the revival's last episodes, it's revealed that Spencer's generous donations resulted in 11 children. In reality, this would be a heavy, even life-changing revelation. Since this is iCarly, though, it's a wacky diversion at most. Now, I know you think you're just here to meet your spiblings and your spapa, <laughs> but as you know by now, I am a fine artiste, and as my progeny, you are my muses. Or should I say, my spmuses. Of his offspring, Spencer becomes especially attached to Potter, describing her as his favorite. Again, messed up if this was real life, but delightfully quirky here. Spencer also hits it off with Potter's mother, Although we'll never learn if this would have blossomed into a relationship, or if Spencer would have taken on a more active parental role. Would you want to grab a drink sometime? It's not like we haven't already consummated the relationship. <laughs> I think that could be fun. For me, it already was. Number three, where in the world is Sam Puckett? Okay, it was always unlikely that this would get an in-depth answer. What time is your mom coming to pick you up? She's not. I told her you invited me to spend the night. I didn't invite you to spend the night. Well, you should, because I'm not leaving. Between retiring from acting and her history with Nickelodeon, Jeanette McCurdy made it clear that she didn't want to be involved in a revival. Given everything that McCurdy revealed in her memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, we completely understand. Still, we held on to hope that McCurdy might make a cameo as Sam somewhere down the line. Just push a button. If you ever need a laugh, cheer, random dance. Even if it was just a Zoom call between Carly and her old BFF, we would have been happy. The most we learn is that Sam briefly reconnected with Carly before joining a biker gang called the Obliterators. I hope she's okay. It's Sam. I hope they're okay. We're sure that wherever Sam is now, she's giving someone a good taste of her butter sock. What is that? A sock full of butter. <laughs> For what? For swinging. I could brand an outfit with this thing. Number two, do Carly and Freddie get married? It took two shows, nine seasons, and 16 years, but Creddy finally became an official couple. Is this really happening? Hope so. It took us long enough. <laughs> as satisfying as their courtship is, the finale leaves a few balls up in the air. It's hinted at in an episode where Spencer thinks Carly's pregnant, but whatever might have happened is left to our imagination. The same goes for their wedding night, assuming that they went through with the ceremony. I didn't expect to fall for you, but you were right there all along. With Marissa and Lubert abandoning their wedding, it's proposed that Carly and Freddie put the venue to good use. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Before the couple can exchange vows, though, we're presented with another question that was obviously being saved for another season. You know what we're talking about. Oh my god. Oh my God. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
you have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. How does Spencer summon fire? Perfect timing. I think my loaf of bread is just about done. Oh, let's go. Ah! Ah! I'm just going to give it a few more minutes. <laughs> on second thought, some questions are better left unanswered. Here's the real number one. Number one, mom? Even more elusive than Mr. Shea, Carly's mom wasn't so much as mentioned throughout the original show's run. When asked about her in the revival's debut episode, Carly immediately dodges the question. What's your mom like? Uh, I... Let's go back to my dad. <laughs> it isn't until the finale that Carly opens up about her mother, confirming that she abandoned her as a child. You are not mom. You would never do to anyone what mom did to us. Just as Carly's ready to move on with her life, her mother arrives at the ceremony. We still don't see Carly's mom, and it's unclear why she suddenly showed up after all these years. But hey, it's not like Paramount Plus would pull the plug after leaving fans on such a huge cliffhanger, right? One last question. Netflix, any interest in stepping in to finance a fourth season or TV movie? So, do you think we might see another iCarly revival by the year 2032? Give us hope in the comments. What's wrong with you, Neville? Why is your lifelong dream to get rid of iCarly? It's not. My lifelong dream is to open my own haberdashery. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.